All right, guys, here we go. Hit me with your best shots. All right, coach. How is it? How is the uh, assimilation, the cohesiveness? How's it all going for you? Well, it's not there, certainly. Um, you know, our, our theme for the year is piece it together, and the two obviously is um, signifying my second year or our second year at uh, LSU. Uh, we have a lot of talent on the floor, but we got to piece it together. We've got kids coming from other programs, high school kids stepping on this college campus for the first time. We've got returning players who will have to play different roles. So we've got to piece it together, and that takes time. And they're excited. Today's the first day of practice. I'm excited. And we won't be with all of our squad today. We've got a lot of issues and health going on, so there will be some that won't be out there. Hey, Coach. Um, obviously, with in college sports in general just being so different with the transfer portal and everything. How did you approach the portal and how excited are you to obviously get these players in and get to know them? And get them? Well, the transfer portal is just like free agency in baseball. Those, those guys have somebody assigned to that computer now, right? And every time somebody gets DFA, boom, you pick them up. Well, that's kind of what the transfer portal is. Uh, we stay on top of it and uh, certainly – uh, it's here to stay, and uh, we lost a tremendous class of seniors last year and a lot of points and a lot of production, and so uh, we, we had to fill a lot of um, needs, and we did that through the high school signings, but um, the big thing is experience when you sign high school kids is that um, they don't have college experience, so the portal gives you some college experience, but they're in a new system now, so... That's why we have to piece it together. Kim, how different a challenge is this from that first year at Baylor? Is it that different or is it similar or is it like any other year you had at Baylor? Um, I think what we're doing is very similar to Baylor. When I got to Baylor, they were bottom of the Big 12 and I want to say had won seven ball games. Last year, I inherited a program that had won nine ball games. And, uh, you know, let me tamper it down a little bit. We won 26 basketball games and finished second in the league to the national champions. There is no way that you can stand here today and think you're going to do even better than that. Not with new faces. We aspire to do that, but I can't look into a crystal ball and see how quickly we all get on the same page. Hey, Coach. Uh, Angel Reese, a lot of excitement about her. What does she bring to this team and, and how do you feel about how you're going to play in the post this year? Well, Angel Reese is a tremendous basketball player. And um, I think you will uh, notice that about her. She can leap out of the gym. Uh, she is uh, very vocal, uh, loves the game. I mean, just absolutely loves the game. And I think that she'll be one of our um, leaders this year, not just because she's one of the more talented ones, but because this will be her third year in college. Your second year at Baylor, can you compare it to this coming up? In the, but is it different in the sense that the transfer portal gives you instant experience and you don't have to wait for people to sit out? How different is that compared to, say, your second year at Baylor where you're, you're, you're signing players but not transferring? Well, you're exactly right. The, the rules have changed such that uh, you can, I guess, get better quicker. You know, I thought we got pretty darn good. Five years we won a national championship and we didn't have the transfer portal. Uh, but I don't view it that way. I view it that you guys just got to have the right players at the right time and the right pieces and everybody plays their role. So I don't think about it like it should be easier. You should do it even quicker. You just go to work and try to, try to build a program that when you step on that floor, everybody's just proud to watch because they play so hard. And, and then you hope at the right time of the year, they're all playing together at, and, and their best at the, at the right time. Kim, obviously you lost a lot of experience like you alluded to, but you did say you added talented players. Do you feel like you're more athletic? Do you feel like you're up and down the court maybe more in a way that you weren't last year? We have more depth. We don't have the same kind of experience, but we have more depth. Um, I thought we were athletic uh, in some, at some positions last year, but
But um, I also thought we were very productive at positions that maybe we didn't think we would be. Um, so I'll let you guys be the judge uh, as you watch us play or, or practice. And, and, and you know, y'all are sports writers. Y'all know how to evaluate talent, right? Kim, two questions for you. First, how would you, with the, the combination of transfers and incoming freshmen, how would you describe that process of, of putting that collective group together? And then, two, I just wanted to get your thoughts on, on Brittany Griner's situation. And uh, I don't think I've seen anything from you on that. And, just, uh, can you, and you won't. I'll answer the first one for you. Um, I think I've already answered that. You sit at a computer. You've got your recruits that are in high school and you try to go, okay, in the 2023 class, how many do we really want to sign? Well, it might be five you want to sign today, but by the time you get to that class, it may be less, it may be more def depending on transfers. Uh, the second part of your question is positions. You've got to see what positions you need. We've got a lot of guards. A lot of guys on that squad, guys can play point guard for me. But I had three guys that played together last year that could all play points. So whoever needs to play is going to be on that floor. And every year we get 15 scholarships. You've got to decide how many of them are going to graduate. You never know who's going to transfer, who you're going to lose through the course of a year, sadly. But uh, you just try to recruit. That's the lifeblood of all programs. Hey, Coach. Um, obviously, Alexis Morris um, you know, ended the year with the injury. Uh, after seeing her, the hold on a minute. What's your name? Corey. Corey, I never see you. Is this your first press conference? Yes. I hope you're at every one of them from now on. Okay. Are you from here? Where are you from? from Alabama. So you drove from Montgomery, Alabama, all the way here? No, I thought you asked where my hometown. Yeah, where'd you come from? No, I drove over All right, that's not far. I'll see you at the next press conference. There's a man to talk to right there. <laughs> Um, Alexis, obviously, with the end of the year, uh, just what have you seen from her over the off season? getting back into it, getting that confidence back? Well, Alexis is itching to be the point guard every day. Coach, am I going to get to play point the whole time? Alexis, it's about winning. Every time I put the ball in your hands and they go trap you, you got to get rid of it. So you sure you want to play point? Don't you want to score? Remember that Iowa State game where you're playing the off guard and KP's bringing it up? You're going to have to use her at multiple positions. And there's several of them that are going to have to play multiple positions. But it's our job to figure it out as we see what they're best at. Are they best at shooting a three? Are they best at taking you off the dribble? Who pushes it up? Who has trouble executing an offense? Uh, but I have a lot more numbers on the perimeter to work with this year. Hey, Kim. Uh, last year there was no question who you, who you would go to if you really needed a shot or leadership. It was Kay Kayla was going to be that person do you do you seek that one person this year or do you or you want it to be several people well in the perfect world you want it to be multiple positions and multiple players that way you're not in a timeout and they know what you're going to do um yeah i don't know i hope we have a bunch of them that can score baskets you know the big uh, thing last year scott if you'll remember is how are we going to score points, remember? It's like they only averaged so many points a game. And I think we exceeded what people thought we could score. And I think a lot of that was the addition of Alexis Morris. I think a great deal of that was those seniors were so confident and they bought into our system and they all just really did better offensively than maybe they had in previous years. What are your wants or expectations for Hannah? My wants and expectations for Hannah would be the same as it would be for any of them. You know, do good. Do good. Coach, um, uh, Flage, this is a, a new modern-day NIL situation. You told me basketball is number one to her. That's the number one thing to her. But she's also allowed to perform and – make money and do those kind of things? I mean, has she told you what her plans are in that regard? And well, first of all, you're not going to miss basketball to go perform or to go do a, whatever she does with rapping. It can be done 
uh, I guess it can both be done, but basketball comes first during basketball season. She's very uh, honor, privileged to be able to have such talent in both that she's probably got a ton of NIL deals. I don't even keep up with them, but uh, she will not miss things to go do rap things because basketball comes first. Kim, you, you are very forward thinking as it pertains to appointing Jennifer into her new role. Uh, I guess kind of take us through your kind of your thought process in doing that. You're, I think you're the first women's basketball program to appoint someone in that kind of role. Why, why was that crucial, do you feel like, uh, to put her there? Because I don't want to do it. You know, I've got my hands full with figuring out how to win basketball games, sell the program, sell season tickets, get the, the, the fast break club up. Those are things I'm comfortable doing. I don't want to learn anything new about NIL rules. You know, when I was coming up, all that stuff was cheating. Boosters couldn't be involved, and, and I'm just like, you know, I, I, I don't want to deal with this, but we've got to stay in front of this because it's here. And so Jennifer, you know, was always being asked questions. My, my coaches, the recruiters were always being asked questions. So uh, actually Coach Bob Starkey and I had the conversation, and he said, this is where it's headed. You need to pick someone on this staff, and that's their sole responsibility. And they are like the liaison with uh, Taylor Jacobs in our NIL department. And so that's the main reason is that I don't want to deal with that, um, but yet – it's a part of our program. I'm for it. Go get what you can for these kids. Uh, but I can't recruit and coach, and here's another big-time added responsibility. And I think since we've done it, other teams have emulated it. I think other programs have, have done what we've done. So, But that was my reason. Yeah, Kim, now that Bob Stark is on your staff, what do you like about working with him? Well, you know, I knew Bob and of Bob through – just coaching, but I never knew him personally. Wow, wow, did I get a big time guy. And then you add Gary Reedus to the mix with his energy and his recruiting ability. Uh, Bob, I can walk away from that court and feel like in good hands. Here's an interim guy that took him to a Final Four here. Here's a guy that knows more about LSU than I know. I know the state. And I know a lot of things he doesn't know, but I don't know LSU like Bob does. Um, I like his knowledge. I like his um, – he just has a head coach's mentality, but he never wants to be a head coach. And that keeps me energized, and it, and it just kind of – every now and then when I need to take a breath, I'll just go and let him go. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's great. Hey, Coach. Uh, so – Last year, we talked a lot about the non-conference schedule that you inherited. Uh, this year, how did it work out? Are you more happy with how the non-conference schedule looks for you? I'm never going to please everybody with non-conference schedule. What I'm going to always do is do what's best for the program and those kids to grow. Each year, as this team and this program gets more talented and gets better and better and better, the non-conference schedule will get tougher and tougher and tougher. Uh, so I think it's exactly what it needs to be. I think we're following the same pattern we did at Baylor. Uh, the SEC is so dang tough that we're not going to go out there and get 10 non-conference games against what we're going to play in the SEC. It just – it's it, you gotta, you got to build confidence. you got to have some success. And then you keep adding to that as the years go by. Uh, just curious, how, how are you personally going to approach year two differently? Do you feel like you can maybe get on them a little bit more now? Do you? No, I, I got to coach. I was me last year. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think you can fake coaching. Coaching is what it is. I think what you have to do as a coach is evaluate your talent and be realistic with your expectations. But your, your intensity, uh, your, your teaching, uh, your disciplining, all those things are who you are. And, um, but, yeah, I'm going to be the same, Kim, uh, and just hope that um, everybody stays healthy. That's always a big part of the equation is, is keeping kids healthy. But, um, oh, I, I'll coach the same way. Kim, it's been a few months now, but the NCAA – decided to 
keep the Final Fours separate, the men's and women's Final Fours separate. Obviously, y'all had the one year where y'all were, uh, the things were different. But do you, are, do you think that's good? Do you think it would have been better to, to put them together? Do you think that the, the, the women's Final Four should continue to stand on its own? And what, well, and what do you think of the, the two regional sites instead of just? That's going to be new. Um, to answer the Final Four question first, Scott, I'm not opposed to keeping them separate, but I'm also open the, open to hear what would be better if you put them together. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the the regional stuff that will be new to all of us. Um, I'm still a, a big proponent of your first and second round games need to be on home courts of the top seats. We tried to get away from that. It didn't work. You have in women's basketball, the fans are usually going to be following those top teams in numbers. And when you take that to a neutral setting, it's been proven that it's not good for TV, nor is it a, an atmosphere that's um, indicative of what it should feel like when you're in the playoffs. Uh, you just mentioned some injuries. Anything serious or anything that we no, should know? No, nothing serious. Nicks and stuff that happened. We're good? All right, guys. Thanks.